Hey there, hope you're doing really well. So I thought we'd do a little video just having a chat about a chisel and we all use chisels. That's a given, you're gonna do woodwork and that's gonna be needed. Whether you use it mainly power tools or pan tools, you're gonna to need them. Now, I wanna bring you in and show you this in a bit more detail. We'll go into a few of the specifics, but I won't go super long on this. Um, but there's probably been a trend, I don't know if you've seen this, but um, once you get to more of a, a spendy chisel, let's say you get to that £100 north cost of a chisel, you get some pretty crazy stuff happening there. You get a lot of stuff these days that looks like it's, um, I don't know really, um, tool jewellery, like highly polished um, kind of looking stuff. Almost looks like someone's just grabbed some highly polished metal and slapped a hand on it. Maybe a bit lacking in aesthetics. And when you look at them, you just wonder, are they more experimental? Are they more artistic than functional? I don't know. I've not used many of them because it's not something that interests me. But hopefully, we take a look at this. This will maybe get some of you thinking about a different option that you could consider. On a little bit of a tangent, if any of you are interested in hand tool woodworking, I think that this book is a great option for you. Um, I'm not going to show you the insides of it because that's kind of copyright issues there, um, but it gives you all the details of what was found inside of a 18th century tool chest, um, fully kitted out with the tools of the day. And why I, I think things like that resource are important is it really shows us what people were using at that time to create the furniture and the general woodworking of the time. This is a furniture maker's kit. You know, a joiner's kit wouldn't be far away either from what they've got there. And the efficiency that those people worked with was pretty incredible. Um, and I think, you know, there's, there's a lot to be learned from that because we do get carried away. You know, I use metal planes. Um, I tend to use a wooden plane more for stock preparation, but certainly with the chisels. Um, I've seen the chisels in here, but there was no way I was going to get access to one because it just I'm not aware of many chisels that survive from the 18th century. I've got a plane which I can show you at another time, but to stay on topic for now, never was I going to find one. just wasn't going to happen. So I would use mainly 19th century, early 20th century chisels. And certainly this is one of my favourites. This is a Sorby. You can't tell very well from this one as it's actually slightly wider at the end here. It tapers down very fractionately and then it's got a nice wasted sides and it's got a nice bolster. The leather washer is kind of bulged out and it's okay. It's, it's nothing incredible. You've just got a machine turned handle here. But it's a nice chisel, it's full of character and it does the job. I'm not bothered that it's not got beveled edges to its sides um, and the sides are a little bit thick because with an inch wide chisel I'm not getting in there and doing fine joinery. So then you've got things like this, you've got the Ashley Isles which I think if you are looking to spend out on a nice chisel and you just want to get a nice pretty straightforward good all round chisel for the bench that's an excellent excellent choice. But again, it looks something like more you would find in the 20th century, but an excellent version. I think these are, these are great. But um, someone who I follow online um, does some tool making. If you, I'll leave a link to their channel and to their website, and I suggest you bother them with comments 
questions um, and general information about this more than I could give you. And, and I saw that they were making 18th century style chisels. And this is a homemade affair. Now, I find that to be quite incredible. And the individual is quite critical of their work in a way whereby they feel this isn't finished well enough. Now, some people might be watching this and agreeing with it. So to my earlier comments that a lot of modern stuff is like this highly polished bar stock, this is how I would expect a tool to turn up, just functional and ready. Um, you know, you've got this 412 octagonal bolster. It's just beautifully finished off this beautiful beach handle which is handmade this feels exactly like the chisels that look in there but this in my opinion is made to a better standard but, but not overworked now before we just drivel on about nothing what are the advantages of a chisel like this one thing you're going to notice here is that it this tapers down that's not something that you see on the more modern chisel style a lot of people are worried that things have got to be an exact width now back in the day i think you could buy stuff that was accurately gauged but for the most part that didn't happen uh, a skilled blacksmith or tool maker would make a tool that was like a just it was a near enough an inch and that's how you would have used it you set gauges and whatever else to work from that it was more than enough and this just doesn't have this obsession with creating this finely polished nonsense tool and what's incredible with this is that all the weight is in your hand and the best description i can give it is it's not nose heavy you know even this one the, the weight is all up front whereas this is all in the hand it's surprising how much leverage there is in your wrist again don't get me wrong i i don't think you should be saying right before i would work i need to splash out on a brand new exclusive set of 18th century style chisels that would be nonsense but if you're one of those people that are looking to spend north of a hundred pounds a hundred dollars whatever currency it is you know and that's not that unusual you look at chisels from veritas lee nielsen they can be kicking off at around the hundred quid mark you know and this is handmade by one person if this was a japanese chisel um we'd be waxing lyrical about skilled trades and We'd all get be misty-eyed about it, and people would be spending a lot of money. Now, the balance that you get from this, I can see why this style of chisel would have been desirable. And you can notice here, compared to my other chisel here, you can see, hopefully, how thin it is. Okay. Now, yeah, that's not a true beveled edge, but it's a very slim edge, which will get you into all kinds of tight spaces for fine joinery. Now, this represents, then... A more heavyweight bench chisel this a nice fine chisel for fine work now if i had limitless resource and i've talked to you before about my ragtag collection of chisels that i've collected over time i pick things like i like again i've chucked a handle on that one it's a nice fine little old chisel if money was no object and i could convince the individual who made these to make me a set no question, I'd have a set made. I'd only need four or five. I wouldn't need to go for like the 15 that turn up in the in the tool chest there. But the balance you get on these is superb. Absolutely lovely. And another thing, just touching real quick, a lot of people will talk about how, you know, you can do pretty much everything with a bevel edge chisel. Now, it really depends about what you're going to classify as a bevel edge chisel. Some people will say, oh, look, you can chop out a mortise with them. You can do this, you can do that. That's true if your bevel edge chisel is something like a, a, a marple's blue handled chisel or something similar to that, a nicely made all rounder, quite substantial. But something like this, this is a fine tool for fine work. Um, this, to, to use a dreadful Star Wars analogy, this this is not a crude blaster. This is a this is a lightsaber for a refined gentleman. This is this is really really good. And yeah, I think you should go and hassle David a little bit on his website. I know he's made some chisels. It may not interest him making them for sale yet. But if you're looking for something different, 
um, but for something that's actually functional um, and not just a polished up piece of A2 steel, steel with a flashy handle smacked onto it, this is what you're talking about. If you're interested in a tool for using rather than obsessing about spending a weekend turning something into a mirror-backed um, show-and-tell piece of nonsense, if that's what you're interested, this is this should be for you. You should be considering stuff like this if you're a serious hand tool guy. Um, very, very impressed. I'm going to be using it as much as I possibly can, and maybe one day I might ask for a few more. But um, definitely look into it. Look into the links in the um, video, and he's made some some lovely chisels. Um, not just in this style, in this kind of earlier 20th century style too. He's done some lovely, lovely work, and um, I think he deserves a bit of recognition for it.